Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And that's right, this is the episode to submit your recruit. So, a couple of things before talking about it. I do want you guys to submit your recruits, but remember, it's Midwest only. So, just Midwestern states because we do not want a recruiting advantage outside of the Midwest. We want to keep it realistic here. And also, there is a way to kind of guarantee a spot for a recruit and it's through channel membership so i do have two tiers now one is two dollars a month that'll guarantee you a spot once every three seasons in one series only and then if there's another membership level it's five dollars a month it guarantees you once every three years in every series so i have the madden undrafted free agents too i'll have that shortly probably tomorrow I'll probably be dropping tomorrow and it's it's kind of a just a way you know to support the channel in a different way it's not necessary you don't have to do it but it's nice if you do also go follow me on twitter at tnj on youtube i am on twitter make sure to go give me a follow as well it's not a requirement but i need to get my followers up you know how it is so remember have a good backstory and you will have a chance to be on the squad remember the better the story the more likely you are to make it and i can't choose everybody so uh sorry if i don't get to you i'm i promise i'm reading every single one so uh there's a lot of competition but submit your recruit get it in this is the episode now let's get into the story Hey, Coach, good win last week, and uh, I just want to bring up something really quick. I know you're busy, worried about the next three games, but let me let me take out my iPad really quick. I want to show you this recruit that I've been looking at really closely. His name is Richard Lewis. He's an outside linebacker from Indiana. He's a two-star prospect, but to me, he's a can't-miss prospect, and the only problem is he does want to go to a big school, so... Really, we have to kind of sell him on these next three games, get a few wins because he's interested in Iowa, and Iowa has not offered him a scholarship at all, but he still is willing to walk on just to play for a Big Ten school. Now, here's the thing. He knows that we're on his recruiting radar, but we do need to win some games, and these next three games are going to be really important in bringing him in. And if we can win these next three games, I think we can make a comeback on Iowa. We are the only school to offer him a scholarship, but this guy, he's going to start right away. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. He has sideline to sideline speed. He's can't miss right now. Now, I went ahead and added him to our board, and just looking at him, he has a number 112 outside linebacker in the nation. He's 6'2", 224, but he's got good tackling instincts. And... He does have to work on his pursuit a little bit, but I'm not really worried. I think that's something that we can develop quite a bit. We are in a three-way race with Memphis and Iowa like I brought up, but the one thing that we can sell him on is that playing time, but we do need to win these next three games in order to convince him a little bit. Now let's look at the rest of our board here. Rizvanovic did commit, and he's a good outside linebacker as well. I think he's going to be pretty useful in pass coverage. I'm not really sure if he's much of a pass rusher we'll have to see I don't really know where he's gonna be at on the defense but he's a pretty good prospect John Berg the run defense run stopping defensive end he commits Bam Cameron he commits Isaac Mitchell I mean all these guys that are coming to our school this year they're pretty much specialists they all do something really well and it's added up to a pretty good recruiting recruiting class now our class is better than last year. We are ranked number 65 in the nation. And last year we were ranked in the 100, so it's definitely an improvement. But winning these next three games is going to go miles for us. And if we can get these next three victories, that's gonna be huge. So you just heard from the head scout and man, we are kind of in a good position. We play three bad teams to end the season starting out with a team that we actually did lose to last year in SMU and then Memphis who was three and six and then Tulane who was one and eight so all three of these teams have bad records and we could possibly sweep to end the season to end the season on a four game winning streak and possibly make a bowl game you never know 
if there's not enough seven and five teams and there's enough six and six teams we can possibly make it but we do have to finish out these games the first one on the road versus smu so here we go we are starting this game out on defense versus one of the worst offenses in the ncaa in smu you don't hear that too much smu usually has kind of an air raid type of offense and they put up numbers so it's pretty surprising to see them this bad so they do have a dual threat quarterback at quarterback here is brown the junior he's going to scramble up the middle break a tackle and he's going to meet the defenders tucker aconquo on the first stop so now third and three this time hang it off to williams williams gets up the middle he's got a lot of room and he is going to fall forward at about the 45 yard line so now first and 10 brown from the shotgun he's gonna try to scramble up the middle he's got a lot of room he's gonna make it run over a defender and that one is gonna be a big gain of 26 as he moves the ball close to the 30 yard line so after picking up another first down here's a handoff this time williams will get stopped in the backfield by james cheney so now second and 10 from the shotgun running his running back in motion throwing out to the sideline he's got roberson that's only a gain of five yards though and that brings it to a third and five at about the nine yard line screen pass out to the left side and we're there to sniff it out williams will get run down that's marvin woods on the tackle you see how they just tried to cheat there quintaris jones just bumped into him and didn't make an attempt to tackle him but we get them to settle for the three points so here we come back on offense trying to establish this run game and it just has not worked the past couple of games that's a loss of two so now third and 12 throw out to the right side it's gonna be incomplete matt adam miller cannot find his target on that one across the middle that one's angel fabian and we had to punt the ball away so here's a handoff this time williams he gets the carry to the right side he's gonna break a tackle and move forward for about three yards so now third and seven five wide receiver set brown has all day to throw trying to scramble out but he gets run down that's alvin ebicelli the guy who we brought in earlier this season in recruiting and we thought that he was going to be the pass rusher we needed he gets a sack in this one so now we do force the punt and here is marlon yarbrough getting going on the next drive the first completion of the game for this white tails offense first down counterplay out to the left side that's jacoby beck He's picking up five yards as the receiver turned running back, just trying to get him going in different ways. Here's a throw out to the right side on a third and five. That's Marlin again, 17 yards. Pinpoint throw that time. Adam Miller, that one had to be on the target. It's a first down. So now as the first quarter expires, here's a throw across the middle. Angel Fabian gets open, holds on to it in traffic. That's a gain of 16. And his first catch of the game, a big first down. So a couple plays later here, third and goal. Throw out to the right side. It's going to be Yarbrough. Six yards out for the touchdown. And we take this 7-3 lead here to start the second quarter off of that nice drive by Miller. So here's SMU back out onto the field. Here's a screen pass out to Tyler Page. And that's going to be a gain of eight. So now second and two. Play action fake. Brown has all day. He's going to scramble out to the right side. Runs over Ryan Robinson and picks up nine yards on that scramble so now six minutes left here in the second quarter here's another handoff from the pistol that's tucker Akako tackling williams behind the line that's a loss of one so now third and ten this time brown throwing the ball deep it's gonna be almost picked off and that's elgin lloyd back in coverage and he gets his first deflection of the game and forces the punt so now here is Miller back out onto the field. Can we put some more points on the board? Yarbrough with the pass out to the right side and a lot of room. That's a gain of 28 and a big first down past the 50. Following that up by a throw to the left side. That's Chris Coretta, 12 yards, first down for the second leading receiver on our team. So now second and 11, this time Miller, he's gonna scramble out to the right side, pick up a couple of blocks, pick up another one, and that's gonna be a first down scramble to the right side, but look, there's a penalty flag on the field, clipping on Howard Vincent, so this one comes back. So third and 14, this time Miller throws to the left side. He's got Angel Fabian in traffic, who goes up and gets it, but that's just 
A gain of 13, and we line up to go for it. Fourth and two. Miller has some pressure up the middle. He's going to scramble out to the right side, throw it on the run, and he's got Yarbrough on the sideline. Gain of 17, and Yarbrough's almost at 100 yards in the first half. So now 30 seconds left here in the first half. Now getting it to a third and goal. This time Miller going to scramble out to the right side. This time he takes it himself. He's in four yards out for the touchdown. And we're looking good on the road versus SMU. And right away we have this 14-3 lead going into halftime here in the first game of this doubleheader. So here we go to start the second half, and we have played good defense up to this point. Here is Williams trying to get going on the delayed handoff. That's to tackle in the backfield, Marvin Woods, the freshman. So now they get it to a third and 12. This time, Brown, he's going to move out to the right side, and he's getting tackled from behind. That's Alvin Ebiselli again, his second sack of the game. So now our offense comes back out onto the field. They've been pretty efficient so far. Here's a throw to the right side, Chris Coretta. I love these two tight end sets that we run. I want to get Javon Oliver more involved, but you know, he's had a pretty down year this year, but here's a deep shot across the middle. That's Marlon Yarbrough and Adam Miller just misses one. He doesn't miss many opportunities like that. That one goes incomplete. So now third and nine, another throw he misses. And wow, Angel Fabian open, Yarrow open. He misses both on this drive. So now, as the third quarter does wind down, here is Brown back out onto the field, finding his favorite target, Tyler Page. And that's a 21-yard gain for a first down. So now, first and 10 at about the 45. Brown's got all day to throw. He throws to the right side. He's got Tyler Page again, close to about the 20-yard line, gain of 27. And that's a big first down. So now this third quarter does wind down under five seconds left. But here's a screen pass out to the right side. And that's going to be a four-yard gain for Williams. So now here to start the fourth quarter, Brown all day to throw. Third and three, throws to the end zone. He's got Tyler Page this time in the end zone for the touchdown. And they're back within one score as they line up here to go for two to make it a three-point game. So here is Brown having all day again. This time runs into Abicelli, but he gets through it. He scrambles up Brown. the middle and falls in. Wow. So they are now within three points, and the pressure is now on our offense to at least get uh, some more points on the board. But here is Miller trying to scramble out, do some things himself, and runs out of real estate. And now we get it to a fourth and four. We got to go for it here. A bowl game on the line, possibly. Here's a throw, and that's Marlon Yarbrough down the right sideline. And that's a gain of 22 and a big first down. So we do continue to run this clock here. Miller on a third and three. This time scrambling out to the left side, sliding, and he's getting to about the 12-yard line. And that's actually SMU that called that timeout. They just gave us the animation. So now under two minutes left. Here's Jacoby Beck trying to get to the sideline, and he can't, but it cuts it upfield for a gain of four, and we get them to burn a couple of timeouts off of some kneels. So third and goal. Here's a throw across the middle. That's Jabari Blaze out of the backfield. One of the most unlikely guys you would see catch a touchdown pass. He goes out of the backfield, and he sneaks up into the end zone for the touchdown. We make it a 10-point game as SMU tries one last effort to that. the end zone, and that one is going to be picked off. Ryan Robinson to end the game. And, wow, we start out this episode 1-0. and oh, And all we need is two more wins, and we can possibly be bowl eligible and finish season two at a 500 record. You never know. But Adam Miller... Well, he had an efficient game, 19 for 29, didn't put up the huge numbers, two touchdowns, 198 yards is good enough for me. And then just looking at what he did on the ground, he actually ran for a touchdown as well as Jacoby Beck, man. I, it's, I, it's tough sledding for our running backs. Our offensive line is just not good right now, and it's hard to kind of open up running lanes. But Yarbrough goes over 100, and Ebiselli does come up with two sacks as Ryan Robinson has that game ceiling interception as well so memphis does actually uh 
move to three and seven on the year after advancing the next week. And just looking at their leaders, they have one of the worst offenses as well as McBride is still their quarterback. But remember season one, we actually did lose to them on the road by 12. We thought this was actually a winnable game and they actually had a good record last season and they just ended up pounding us on their home turf. So we're looking for revenge here in this game as they are not quite the same team as last year, but still, we want our revenge. So here's Marlon Yarbrough getting going in this one. He's got an 11-yard reception to open it up. So here is Miller, deep shot across the middle. He's got Chris Coretta, who goes up in traffic and hauls it in. That's a gain of 29 for the big freshman tight end. He's gonna be special. He's still got three more years after this one of eligibility. It's gonna be pretty special to see him grow. We're on a third and 10. Memphis sends the pressure up the middle and we can't make that accurate throw and pressure. And we move it to a fourth and 10, just out of field goal range. We gotta go for this one. Here's a throw to the right side. Howard Vincent gets it going and he's moving inside the five yard line with the stiff arm. And he's got a gain of 29. And remember, he was number one on our depth chart to start the season, but he's kind of moved back. Him and Marlon Yarbrough, I thought we're going to be a pretty good tandem, but it turns out that Howard Vinson just isn't a full-time starter on the outside. But on a third and goal, here's a throw to the right side, and Rodney Ross cannot get the pass from Adam Miller. So we do settle for three points on that first drive. Here is McBride back onto the field, throwing across the middle, and that's going to be a drop by their running back as he had a lot of space in front of him. He could have possibly turned up field and took it pretty far, but they do try to kick the long field goal and that is gonna be off the upright. So now here we are back out onto the field. Chris Coretta getting going in the passing game down to the left sideline and he's got a gain of 17 close to about the 30. So now, after losing a couple yards on first down, second and 13, scrambling out to the right side, throwing across the middle. That's Angel Fabian. He's good for a couple of those a game. He gets open. That's a gain of 20 and a first down. So now a second and 10 carry. This time, Jacoby Beck getting up the middle. And like I said, it's been tough sledding for our running backs. That's about a gain of one. So now third and nine. This time, Miller throws out to the right side. This pass rush is getting in there right away. They still do have a pretty good team. They just don't have the record to show for. So we do settle for the field goal there on that drive, making it 6 nothing. But here is Memphis driving on the following drive. And here's McBride scrambling up the middle, getting helped out a little bit, a first down. So now here's a handoff. This time Gainwell, he's getting in two yards out for the touchdown. And Memphis takes the 7-6 lead here on the road. So here we are back out onto the offensive side of things. Here is Chris Coretta getting smacked on that one. And he picks up a nice gain and a first down. So now a second and 10 dump off pass. This time Jacoby Beck puts on a move. He's getting upfield, but only a gain of four as that brings it to a third and six. Miller gonna throw out to the left side. He's got Yarbrough who's open seven yards for the first down as we move the ball closer into field goal range. So now here is Miller scrambling out to the right side. This time taking it himself. He's getting tackled from behind, but that is a gain of nine and a fourth and one, but being greedy. We're gonna go for it here at home. Quick throw out to the right side. It's deflected by the defender that time, dropping back into coverage. He usually pass rushes on this in this formation. We got fooled and we actually turned the ball over. But now let's fast forward here to this later in the second quarter. Here's a throw out to the right side. Rodney Ross, 14 yards. So first and 10, quick throw out to the right side. Rodney again, 15 yards, just like that. Back-to-back -back catches for the sophomore. So now we do move the ball across the 50-yard line. Second and two, this time throw across the middle. It's Jacoby Beck out of the backfield. He's got a gain of 11 on that one as we're kind of killing this clock and trying to get some points on the board. Throw across the middle. There's Ross again, his third catch of the drive, and he's got 10 yards on that one. So now we do try to run the ball on a third and inches, and we can't go anywhere. And in this first half, we have settled for three field goals, as that's how this half ends. 
So now in a nine to seven lead here in the second half. Here's Marlon Yarbrough trying to get going in this one. Hasn't had quite the game he had last game. That's only a gain of six, but a first down. So now trying to get the running game going. Jacoby Beck hasn't been able to do anything. And look at that, 10 rushes for less than, I think it's negative one yards I have in this game. So here is a throw out to the right side. That's gonna be a first down that time by Chris Coretta as we move the ball inside the 15 yard line. Adam Miller scramble out to the right side, picks up a block, picks up another one. He's gonna take this one himself. Touchdown, 11 yards. And that's the thing about Adam Miller. He does have the mobility. That's something that Trayvon Davis just does not have. He's a pure pocket passer, but he can sling that ball. But Adam Miller has the accuracy and the mobility. So now, second and 11. Here is Memphis, back on the next drive. Running the counter play, look who it is. It's Derek Ampito with the tackle in the backfield. So now, third and 13. McBride, all day to throw, throws across the middle. It's almost picked off, Tucker Okonkwo, one of the originals from the beginning of this series. And he almost comes up with a big interception. So now, here we go in the fourth quarter, trying to kill some clock. Finally, Jacoby Beck. Get some running room to the right side, breaks a tackle. He's got 15 carries for 19 yards. But we do need to keep some balance here, so we do continue to run the ball and run the clock. Jacoby Beck, three yards. So now it's second and 10, we try to keep him, catch him off guard, and the play action just does not work. Adam Miller loses eight on that one. So now third and 15, five wide out there. Here's Miller scrambling up the middle. He's got a lot of room, and he tries to fight forward. It's a gain of 12, but we do have to settle for the field goal as we give the gotcha, ball back bitch. here. And now we're up two scores as here on the next drive. Look who it is. It's Shaq Royal, our number one recruit last year. He actually has three sacks in this game. That's his third sack as we move them to a fourth and 11 and a chance to move to five and six on the season. McBride throws to the left side. He's got a man, Richard, down the sideline and he's gonna use a stiff arm, and look at him still fighting. That's a big game as he moves the ball inside the 15. So now, this game still is alive. First and 10, throw out to the right side. It's that. picked off, LG Lloyd, and that is the game, and we seal it up and move to 2-0 in this episode. A three-game winning streak, our first three-game winning streak of this series, and Five and six with a chance to go to 500 next game and possibly become bowl eligible. What a turnaround this season has been. The defense has balled out. And who knew that slight defensive adjustment of not having conservative tackling has made a big difference. Our defense is a lot, a lot more aggressive. And wow, I mean, I'm surprised at this defense. We are actually balling out. Shaq Royal has his best game of his career, three sacks in this one. Our offense does just enough to win the game, and that's what you gotta do. You just gotta win these games. So we have a chance to move on to five and four in conference play and move to six and six overall. So can we finish out this season, and will we possibly make a bowl game? But remember, we are going up against Tulane, and if you guys have been following the storyline, Tulane is actually one of the schools that is poaching Ethan Aguayo, our defensive coordinator. So you never know what's going to happen. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Can we finish six and six? Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.